Alrighty tidy folks, let this stand as sort of the short version of rebuilding the transmission in the 2014 Jeep Patriot. This is just going to be kind of a highlights clip, I guess real, for those that want to see just the really important bits and want to scroll through really quickly, there will be chapter markers to let you know where everything's at. So let's get into it. First step is going to be removing all of the case bolts from the two case halves. I did not count them. I believe there to be 21 or 22 of them. You will also need to remove the rear bearing cover, which is sort of a thing that Chrysler does. It's just a Chrysler thing. Every Chrysler transmission I've ever seen has this little access panel for a chain or some bearings or something. It's sort of what they do. Keep in mind that this footage is sped up nearly twice as fast as the full-length video. If there's something that it goes by too fast, you can always go to the full-length video and find roughly the same place. Everything is marked in it with chapters as well. And this is all the same footage, just cut down really small and sped up very quickly. You'll need to remove, there are snap rings that hold the bearings in place in the case to keep them from walking in the case. You might need to smack the case side with a mallet or a dead blow of some kind to get it loose from the RTV. Here is the video of the input shaft or main shaft bearing play. You can see I'm prying on it from the opposite end of the case there where they provide you a little, a little groove for you to stick a screwdriver or pry bar in to separate the case halves. And that is way too much play. That is what was making that dugga 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 noise that you heard in the diagnosis video and the removal video. So you separate the case halves and get everything set apart so we can start inspecting things. We remove the bolts from the shifter assembly. There are three of them on the rear of the rear case half. Take off Eclipse from the shifter beam and remove the shifter beam. And then we go to removing the rear bearings from the main shaft and the counter shaft with a tool that I made, there will be an image in the primary, the main long video, again with a chapter marker. You can make the tool yourself or you can purchase them, they are available. They're a little bit harder to find the type of tool that I would have preferred to use, the kind that I made for here, but they are available, they are manufactured. And I want you guys to keep in mind that this footage was about five total hours of recording that I've now cut down into just a couple minutes. So do not let this video stand as a measurement of time that you should take and expect to perform this job on your own vehicles. This, this is absolutely not the video for that. But after removing the bearings, we clean the bench so that we can remove the gear set and shifter assembly. In the other video, I did a bunch of inspection and cleaning and, and such that I showed in the full length that we didn't get here. This is the very sped up footage of reshaping the tooth facing on the reverse idler. I didn't get a chance to do it on the synchro sleeve because we were behind schedule, so we didn't get that done, but the reverse does engage far nicer than it used to. It used to crunch in every time. It now does not do that. So this is the third or fourth or fifth time, I don't know, I've done it a few times, to reverse gears to make them engage smoother. 
and I have yet to have had a problem. You shouldn't be engaging reverse all that often anyway, unless you're driving forward and backward and forward and backward and forward and backward repeatedly. I don't know why you would do that. I've not had any problems arise as of yet from it. We then move to placing the gear set and shifter assembly back into the rear case half. The order of operations for reassembly appears to be main shaft and shifter assembly for two, three, four, five. Press the bearing on halfway and then put the counter shaft in with the shift mechanism for one R, one reverse. Put that bearing on halfway and then install both bearings fully. If you can do it simultaneously, simultaneously, I don't have the tools for that in this shop. Chrysler would have designed and built this thing on a jig, a, a large press with the tooling required to specifically do these transmissions all in one go. So you put the whole gear set assembly on the jig, you put the case over top of it, you put the bearings on top of that, and then you press it all together in one fell swoop. In the shop, you don't have that luxury, so we had to do it one at a time. You then put the snap rings back into the rear case half so the bearings do not walk. And finding enough materials to use as shims so that I could effectively press the bearings onto the shafts. That was fun and interesting, he said sarcastically. Also, the bearings need to be pressed fully all the way down onto the shafts. And if you don't have a correct jig for it, doing it the way I'm doing it with 2x4s and spacers and shims, it's not the easiest task to do. I don't know how you would do this with the transmission still installed. I saw a video while I was researching this transmission to try to figure that out, and I can't figure out how you put the bearing back in correctly without disassembling the whole thing and damaging the transmission. We then move to removing the differential bearings. I had to cut them off. I mentioned in the primary long video that this is sometimes the way you have to do it, depending on the tools that you have available or that you can purchase. So I pulled the outer shell and the roller bearings off of the inner race and just used the Dremel. I didn't want to use a big cutoff wheel just because they're large in diameter and they're hard to get in when you're up against a surface on one side. So what you generally do is you cut them at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. And at some point you will remove enough material that you can hit the air hammer or a chisel and a hammer or a screwdriver and a hammer or something. And the rest of the thin material will snap and the inner race will be under tension. It should usually pop loose from where it is pressed on. This one did not do that. It took me quite a while to get the inner race off of both sides of the differential. Again, I was going slow so as not to damage any part of the differential while I was doing this. But we have brand new bearings that came in a kit that was surprisingly not as expensive as I would have expected. I think it was 160 or 180 dollars. This is 2024, so that's saying something. The Harbor Freight pullers that we had weren't big enough for the larger of the two differential bearings. No idea why they were two different sizes. They were just two different sizes. So I kind of had to fudge it a little bit, where instead of trying to pull it off, I just cut the whole thing apart anyway, manually, with a little Dremel. And it's possible, but it's, again, slow. But sometimes slow is good. Slow and steady wins the race, right? 
they say. With all of that done, we can put a little bit of ATF on the bearings, set them back in the case, set the differential back in the case, and set the bearings back in the races. And put all of the gear sets back in. Again, that's in the full video. If you want to see that in its entirety, make sure you go check it out. I made sure to keep the RTV image, or footage rather, at one time speed because it is very important. Or half of the RTV footage at one time speed because it is very important. You don't need to see it twice at one times, but then you put the case halves together, make sure you get the bolts in so you're not separating the case halves and losing your potential seal from the not yet cured RTV. Once you have one or two bolts secured, you can then flip it over, put all the bolts in, torque them down. I put them at about 24 foot-pounds. You can look that up on a converter online yourselves if you need to know Newton meters or Pascals? Kilopascals? I don't remember the other measurement. And of course I didn't get footage of me torquing them so it looks like I'm a liar, but you'll have to take my word for it that I used a torque wrench on nearly all but one or two of the bolts that you could only get a wrench on. And you'll notice there is not a ton of RTV oozing out of the case halves. That is a good thing. You don't want excess RTV that's not providing sealing on your seal surface that just squishes out into everything. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe it, crank it, and rip it. And we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.